Welcome to Earth Eats. I'm Kate Young and I'm here in Katsumi's teaching kitchen and I'm with Maury Wilhite. She's the instructor and the owner of Katsumi's teaching kitchen here in Beach Grove, Indiana. So Maury, it's so great to be here in your kitchen and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and just how you got into doing this. I've been here in Indiana for about 20 years. I was in the Army and I married my Army sweetheart and I came here. I am actually a Japanese language teacher. At first I was doing Japanese tutorials and my friends here in Indiana, they were telling me, well, maybe people in Indiana are more interested in eating Japanese food than speaking it. So I just switched subjects from language to food. It's all from my mom. She, she was a Japanese food snob and unfortunately she raised two Japanese food snobs is what she did. So. A lot of people come here, yeah, they love Japanese food and culture, but they want to make it at home. So hopefully I could instill that in you so you can make any kind of Japanese food at home. I know that one of the things that you're very particular about is rice. Well, one of the uh, problems I had, people ask me, where do you eat Japanese food? And basically I tell them nowhere within a four hour radius. I told you it was a snob. <laughs> the rice I use here in the kitchen is this one here, Koshi Hikari is the brand. This will obviously not be sold at a local market. You have to go to the Asian Food Mart. And these are the Chinese characters for gold and rice, as in Hinmai, which is for standard. Here are the other rice from the same company. They'll say premium short grain, and right here, super premium. I mean, you could eat it for any other Japanese dish, but it's specifically designed for sushi making. And the reason why I don't like a lot of Japanese restaurants locally is because they don't use sushi rice, because it's really expensive. This one right here is uh, $32 for 15 pounds. It's about how much you're willing to spend for taste, for authenticity. If, you know, $32 isn't good enough, here's Kinmai, my mother's brand. This is running about 38 to 42 a bag right now, depending on which Asian food mart you go. And the reason why it has a, a foil bag, it, it has a nitrogen flush to keep it all fresh looking and everything. There's smaller bags you could get. Okay. And this is running, depending on where you go, uh, 18 to 22. Okay, so, so that's gonna be for somebody who wants to try it, but yeah. isn't sure that they're gonna be making sushi enough to right. get the full bag. So I tell people jokingly, but not really jokingly, uh, don't feed this to your kids. Because uh, the, after this, they're not going to want the typical American, you know, minute rice and everything. You'll see. The main things would be the rice, soy sauce, seaweed. If you want authentic Japanese pay taste, you will have to pay. You just spent $32. Go ahead and buy the mason jars. Sushi, as you know, is a pretty food. So that means if you don't keep it airtight, it starts to yellow. Oh. So if you want to keep that pretty Japanese look, uh, you'll want to go ahead and put, you'll need six jars that'll fill it five and a half times for 18 pounds. We start with the right kind of rice and yes. then how do we prepare it? So rice is uh, technically an import from China and it requires a lot of water. This particular rice, as you can see, it's white. It is harvested brown, but they polish off the brown parts, which is the fat and amino. And this is basically straight carbs, but this is the yummy part. Okay. And those who are counting carbs, I hardly eat this stuff, maybe one or two bites a month because it's 44 carbs per quarter cup. So, we don't uh, need to worry about that. Okay, I was just telling you, <laughs> just for those on the keto diet, uh, there are a lot of ways to make your rice, but um, I'm half Japanese. We use rice cookers. I'm okay. sorry. Uh, you can use the Instapot. Uh, even though it says two minutes for the rice, it'll take 22 minutes because of all the decompression and everything. Okay. So that's a pre-measure. Roughly three cups. It's all nice and pretty. No, and also you're checking for rocks and insects sometimes. It, they're usually good about not doing that, but you know, <laughs> just in case. Now we're gonna pre-rinse. It is, you can't tell yet, but since they uh, polished it, there's some little dust on it. Some starchy dust. You can eat it, but you might as well clean it up if you have a chance. When you're at the sink, you could just put it the rice in your strainer and then let it run under cold water for 40 seconds okay. and if you're in a hurry. So, and each family has different rules. Some say rinse it until it's clear. 
I just want to rinse the starchy dust off because you don't want to break down the grain, let alone wash away all the nutrients. Because right now it looks like I hardly rinsed it at all. After we rinse it off, I'm going to uh, let it uh, rehydrate. Because the grain here, obviously it's dry. At this point, how you cook it is you rinse it, put water in it, cook in the rice cooker. But I add more water to it and let it uh, soak for a minimum of 20 minutes mm -hmm. to rehydrate the grain so that way uh, it'll be sticky or rice. Okay, so you're going so, for sticky. Yeah, sticky and also moist. And the quality of the water will affect the taste of the rice. So when you're letting it pre-soak, let it pre-soak in cool to cold water. When I was younger, I thought I was smart. I was in a hurry. So I pre-soaked it in hot water for five minutes. And then I steamed it and it came out like oatmeal. <laughs> so that mistake was only one time. Okay. The nice cold water, thank you. With the uh, steaming, ultimately in the Japanese rice cooker, it comes out nice and fluffy. So you can see that. I have about half an inch water sitting on top. So the grain will have some water to soak in. So here is the rice. I stuck it in the fridge for about 20 minutes. It'll be nice and chill. So this is what a $32 bag of rice looks like. If you uh, remember how it looked beforehand. It's, it's uh, much more opaque and white. Yes. And also it's 50% fatter because it got rehydrated. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit fluffier. Uh -huh. Yes. So what you want to do is, I have, uh, again, bottled water, since I don't have a water filter system here, is very important. So you want to make sure that your water tastes good. Yes. Because it's going to affect the flavor of the rice. Exactly. Okay. So I have about half an inch, or excuse me, yeah, three quarter, a quarter of an inch of uh, water inside the sushi okay. rice. And then here's your kombu. Don't forget your kombu. That's what, um, it infuses the umami flavor in the rice doing nice. steaming. So that's how that's you get great. your perfect sushi rice. The rice is done. The moment we've all been waiting for. So you don't need your um, kombu anymore. Okay. Go ahead and mix it up a little to, you know, spread that umami flavoring around amongst the rice. Okay, kind of fluff it up. Yes. So it's a more cut and fold. So sushi was an import from China to Japan about 12, 1500 years ago. Starting with how to uh, make the rice, uh, they, uh, they also learned how to um, cure raw fish. So how you do that is that you mix the rice with salt, pack on the raw fish during the summer, to eat in the winter time. And then 800 years ago, vinegar was introduced to Japan from China. So instead of salt, they're mixing vinegar with the rice. So that's where the word sushi comes from. Su is vinegar and meshi is the rice. So it's okay. about the vinegared rice. It's about the vinegared rice. Yes. It is not about the raw fish. It's not about the raw that's fish, awesome. not the caterpillars or the dragon shape. It's about the rice. This is what I uh, recommend to my students because it's already ready. Usually a uh, ratio of tablespoon to a cup because I, I usually kind of flavor it on the lighter side. So when you're mixing it at home, just go ahead and uh, taste and see how much you want to put in. It is a, a cut and fold from the bottom. This will be how you would mix it all up. Your uh, paddle is basically perpendicular to the wall. Okay. So you want to cover it, not necessarily for the heat, but so it won't dry out. You should really use a cheesecloth, but you know, I'm lazy. We'll go ahead and get the rolling mat ready. And also we're going to make two sauces really quick. One is the wasabi. And the other one is the spicy mayo, or AKA yum yum sauce. In traditional Chinese medicine, wasabi is used for anti-poison or stomach aches. So that's why they paired it with raw fish. I don't want to ruin the mood, but parasites in the raw fish. That's what they're trying to cover. Three years ago, I found a wasabi farm in Portland, Oregon, and they wanted $35 for two ounces. So us mere peasants, we use, it's called wasabi, but it's basically powdered horseradish, with mustard seed tinted wasabi green. So you can have it ready made. And uh, I show you how to make it from powder because it'll be fresh every time. When you use the ready made, once you open it, it's like soda, it'll go flat. So if you want it fresh, you wanna do it this way. So I just put a, 
a bunch in here. Uh, I'm gonna use a couple of droplets of water. Go ahead and mix this up. This is a texture I was aiming for, as you can see. Okay. For those who want their wasabi to be spicier, uh, you always put a lid on to keep it from drying out. Cover it, and then you let it sit upside down. So uh, you let it hang upside down like so. Gravity will pull the spiciness down. Remember, the longer it hangs, the spicier it will be. So that'll be up to you, Kate. You okay. decide. And so the other one we're gonna make, uh, I'm using the infamous QP mayonnaise. It's modeled after the Cupid doll in the US like 50, 60 years ago. And what does a Cupid doll have to do with mayonnaise? I mean, I have no idea, but it's good. It's cute. That's all that matters. So I put that in just to keep it authentic. I have them uh, squeeze in about four seconds worth of lime juice. And then you add sriracha to taste. And that's basically it. Very nice. I goes up. I usually do a half a sheet. Again, this is the shiny side for presentation and the rough side up to receive the rice. So I'm just spreading it lightly. You don't want to do cold rice. It's hard to move cold rice. So try to keep it at warm, the heat you can manage. If you see your seaweed wilting, your nori, your it's too hot. What we're gonna do is a sotomaki, meaning outside wrap. So here is the black sesame seed. It's just black. So when you put it on the white rice, it'd be a nice contrast. I bring this to the side. Instead of flipping it on your own, you could just use the mat. So you could do it in one piece and it won't break up. California roll, just to remind you, is a cucumber, avocados, and imitation crab meat. You want to have a nice uh, symmetry to this, so when you cut it, it looks all nice and pretty. Thinner is better. Usually, imitation crab meat is uh, Alaskan Pollock steamed out to its pure white like this, and then they add the red dye to give that imitation look. So have your thumb underneath, your fingers on top, in this case of the uh, imitation cra crab meat, and we're going to roll three quarters of the way over. Stop right here. Start from the center and push outwards like so. You want to lift the mat up so it doesn't go into your sushi roll and just do a quarter turn. And that's basically it. That's the tricky part that everyone gets stuck at. But you want to have your hands molding to cylindrical, not triangular. Hi. There you go. I'm going to fold the mat in half, give it a little bit more squeeze. The tighter the roll, the less likely it'll fall apart when you're cutting it. Nice. So we'll come out at the end a little, which is okay. So this is where we cheat. Real sushi knives literally could co cost thousands. In your home, just use the sharp, sharpest knife from the, of the bunch. I just sprayed it with non-stick spray and we could cut it nicely. So I'm starting from the back of the knife, long cuts. You want to do long cuts so it'll be nice and pretty in the center. You don't want to push it straight down because it'll squash the sushi out. So remember, sushi is a finger food, about one inch. Gorgeous. And then these are the ends. They're not very pretty, but we'll put in here anyway, so. But that's it. So you wanna be, oh, how pretty, chomp, chomp, chomp. It looks good, yes, that's nice, but the main thing is taste. Oh, I'm so excited to try this. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna want some wasabi. It's amazing. All those flavors and textures. I got a really big hit of the wasabi. Um, but yeah, the rice is incredible. Like warm is the word that comes to mind, but I don't mean temperature. I just mean something about the softness of the flavor. It's really wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It will be good an hour or two, but usually fresh is best. Yeah. These kind of things, so. Well, thank you so much. Oh, sure. Amore. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and you can find our podcast at eartheats.org. Thanks, Maury.